Why carry me down threats with my best coat and Desert Eagle? Yo. Wow. Take it back. <laughs> Gotta take it back. Gotta take right. it back. Let me tell you something, man. What up? The, first of all, to the listeners, that voice you was hearing is, is the originator of the triplet style. Man. This man perplexed me and my partner, King Tech, for a long time when his songs first start coming out. Hmm. Hawaiian Sophie, uh, Fun, uh, Let's Play House, uh, Bust the Speaker. Uh, I could go on that first album he put out, Word to the Jazz, was something that we studied because we had yet to hear somebody flow like that. Mm. We didn't get it. We didn't understand where did he learn to dissect that pocket? What made him dissect that pocket? Why did he do that? People wasn't doing that at that time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what, what drove him to that place in that process, it, that curiosity is what kept us so intrigued about this culture. Surely I know a lot of people affiliate him to Jay-Z because that was the first time we ever heard Jay-Z rap uh, with, on a Hawaiian Sophie. And uh, we thought they were brothers because his name was Jazz O and the other guy's name was Jay-Z. Right. So we thought it was a group thing, kind of <laughs> like when you see YBN Corday and everybody got the YBN. We thought it was a connection. Um, he went on to do three albums, but he went on to put out a whole lot more music um, that just consistently, consistently amazed us to your soul. Um, was one of the albums to follow up to Word to the Jazz. I have nothing but tremendous respect for him. People always say who's your favorite MCs or your top MCs. I don't do top MCs. I just tell people who my favorites are because he gave birth to so many styles. I want to ask him about it. But he's here today, man. He's on a whole new crusade. He has his new EP, The Warm Up, coming out tomorrow. Uh, we're going to celebrate his life and career. Glad to have him on the show. Good friend, the one and only Jazz O. Jazz! Yo, yo. Welcome, yo. welcome. What it is. Yo, yo. Y'all appreciate y'all. Come on, man. How you doing, Jazz O? I'm great. <laughs> I'm great. Fucking Jazz O, man. Nothing else to be, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. It's We're going to take our thing. time. I'm, at, I'm, I'm only a fan today. I ain't even a journalist. I'm only a fan I today. appreciate that, bro. Absolutely, man. Um, We found out so much. Your, your company is called Kings County? Yeah, Kings County, County Media, Media Group. Group. Yes. I'm from Oakland. Right. So what is Kings County for those who don't know? Oh, for Kings County, for people who don't know, Kings County is Brooklyn. Uh, You know, of course, spelled differently. You know, I spell it my own way. But, uh, you know, Brooklyn is in my heart. And uh, it was something that it just came to me. Like a lot of things, like when you when you plant yourself spiritually, you know, you, you open your mind and your heart to different things. And some people call them uh, epiphanies. You know, I just, I just call it, you know, revelation. And, you know, things that work and you know that they're going to work. Because, you know, for, you know, I stuck with that name, uh -huh. you know, because I, I knew that it, w it was catchy, you know, um, at times, you know, I didn't have the the proper tools to facilitate and and put out things through it. I just I was waiting for the right time. And, you know, the right time is now. The right time is now. Yes. You put out an album called Kings County, right? Yeah. Back in 2002. Two. Right. Yes. So you've been building on this whole vision even yeah. before that yes because it wasn't it didn't come out on my label or record company it came out through a company called rancor records which mm -hmm. was a small independent and um you know we just had an idea uh the person who basically asked me to do an album they wanted me to do a solo album mm -hmm. but the way that i um i was acquainted with this person uh you know was through uh, my guys, mm -hmm. you know, which you know we named uh, we named the crew the Immobilari. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I felt it only right. It's like, yo, let's just do a compilation. Let everybody get some. Let everybody get some jazz. Oh, I want to know who you are. You know what I mean? Like before Word to the Jazz came out, you talk about Marcy. I don't know how you grew up. 
You know what I mean? Right, right. I always wanted to know how did who is Jazzo? What what was your household like? Who who was this guy that uh, most people affiliate to Jay Z, but had his was already rapping? It sound like before Jay Z was rapping. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. You know. Um, man. So I mean, it turns out I was always a a question guy, a word guy ever since young. Um, I mean, I remember as early as five years old, mm -hmm. you know, asking my mom, like, what does nothing look like? <laughs> wow. So, <laughs> you damn at five, dog? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and what was you drinking in that milk bottle, kid? Oh, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that was Kool Aid but, at what, five, sweet. <laughs> that was Kool Aid? <laughs> right. <laughs> Super Kool Aid. But whatever it was, you know, I mean, I wasn't, they were giving it to me. So, uh -huh. but, um, you know, when after that point, you know, it was basically a thing where I I knew that um, spiritually and intellectually, besides, you know, textbook stuff that you learn in school, mm -hmm. for the most part, I was on my own. Okay. But um, also intellectually, as far as, you know, textbook stuff, like my mother was very key in um, how I feel about literature in general and you know articulation and vocabulary because you know she used to always hit me with um with new words mm -hmm. i mean even as a youth i remember being like six years old and um you know i was being silly one day and you know she was like oh you know he's called me johnny he's oh johnny you being so facetious and i was like <laughs> what <laughs> at six yeah uh-huh so you know so she threw stuff at me yeah. you know Besides, like, of course, we know ain't is now in the dictionary, but there was a time, you know, you know, mm -hmm. we go back to a time where the word mm. ain't was not even in the dictionary. So every time we used it, my mother would look at me a certain way. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like it's is not or, or aren't or mm -hmm. isn't. It's not ain't, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, so she always hit me with, you know, certain words and um, she helped, you know, Develop you into the artist you became because yeah. of that. Yeah, I want, I want, I want to say she was running around, she running was, around the crib, tripling in. Uh, okay, you know, what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know, spin bars. She and was spin, your mom was spin bars. No, <laughs> you know no, what I'm saying? she got she, bars. She got she bars. bars. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't picking beats. Uh, you know what I'm saying? You say we. How many siblings were there? Oh, two. Okay. Yeah, I'm the youngest. Uh, my sisters, the uh, middle child, and my mm. brother Rich is the eldest um my sister michelle she's the middle child and uh yeah it was a lot of love in in marcy and in um, the projects or outside of the projects in the projects okay yes but i was born and raised born and raised in marcy uh-huh mm -hmm. yeah who who were like as a youth who were y'all heroes like your local heroes in the neighborhood or who who did you look up to oh man I don't, I don't know if they want me to mention them all. Well, they were your heroes. You ain't, you ain't, you know, saying you ain't go incriminate. Yeah, yeah, but let me tell you something. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> for the G's, for the real G's, it's like it don't matter what under what guys you <laughs> mention them. They're like, oh, why you mention me, man? Uh huh. No, but um, no, nah, that's real. I get that. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, um, we had we had some we had some people that um, like I have I have my personal. Heroes. Um, he's he's not physically here with us today, and he probably didn't know it. But um, it was a cat who lived in my building, Shelby Morgan, uh -huh. and um, he was just an all around. He was, you know, he was a few years older than me, and he was just an all around good dude, uh -huh. you know. And and that's what it was. Like you know, a lot of people they say like, oh, you know, I looked up to this person because you know he was a G, you know he. You know, he bust his gun and this, that, and the other. And that's cool. You know what I'm saying? And, I, you know, I got something like that. And, like, I'm sorry, but I'm I'm really not going to mention them because, yeah. you know, there's, Absolutely. Yeah, there's no, uh, you say no uh, stat mm -hmm. on, uh, you know, that. But, you know, anyway. Yeah, you, you ain't got to mention them. I'm just yeah. I'm just curious to, like, in Marcy Projects because so many, so much greatness has now come from that area. Right. Um, and growing up in Oakland, we had people that we looked up to that we kind of like were inspired by um that that made us believe that we could get into this music business and make an enterprise out of it live and survive off of it right uh and i'm just curious to 
because at the time when you were coming out, you were signed. That first album came out on EMI. Yes. Okay, and that was at a time where shit, you record to get a record deal was like getting in the NBA. Yeah, for the most part. Yeah. And mm-hmm. and even like my aspirations weren't really to um like it it only became like to be to to be a recording artist and have a a record deal or it wasn't even that to have a record deal it was just to put out a record uh huh because you know when we heard um King Tim the Third oh. and then we heard um Rappers Delight mm-hmm. I'm like yo that's what I want to do I want to make a record you know what I'm saying but we didn't even know anything about like you can have an actual deal and all this other stuff that's that's involved with it but um you know some of the heroes as far as music yeah you know they weren't like they didn't have deals like back then you know there was no record deal for a dj mm-hmm. or an mc so mm-hmm. you know we had cats that used to bring the music out mm-hmm. you know um we had frankie d mm-hmm. you know with tony g they you know tony g used to talk on the mic for him and back then it was almost an, an equal thing like the dj was the dude and the MC was the side guy, uh-huh. and most of the DJs really did most of their own talking too, uh-huh. you know. And in the same sense that the um, the guys who developed into more of an MC, they also DJ like you know, like uh-huh. I, you know, that's what I learned. You know, I learned how to rhyme, and then you know, I learned how to scratch and cut, you know, and all the you know needle drop and all that other shit. Uh-huh. So. Yeah, um, that's interesting. Um, that you say that that's kind of how we were attacking. I, I just like doing the parallel, Heather B. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I've never got to ask Jazz all these things. It would appear to me by how advanced you were as a rapper at that time, mm-hmm. um, at, in, at as a youth. You know, we talking late eighties, early nineties. It would appear to me that you were the chosen one. I would assume that ooh, when Jazz O comes out. He about to put Marcy on the map. Ain't nobody out rapping this dude. What mm-hmm. was it like for you? Was it that? Did the people in the in the projects in the neighborhood knew that? Damn, that's the that's Jazz O. Was it like that? Um, yeah. And and back then they they called me uh Jazz. It was short for Jazz Master B. Uh huh. Remember, you oh, know, Jazz. you had those the Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you had those big ass you had to have a big <laughs> ass name and shit. Make, you know, to make you feel more important. Yo, Jazz, Jazz crazy Master for breaking that up. Jazz hey, Master right, though. B. Hey, yeah. hey, you don't do anything that you're ashamed of. I ain't right. ashamed of it, so that's you know crazy. there it is. Were you battling back then too? Oh yeah, yeah. I was battling. And, yeah. And I, I was coy with it because I didn't really want to hurt anybody. Okay. You know, but the thing is, it's like, you know, somebody comes into your conference, you know, meaning like, you know, maybe some outside niggas coming around to Marcy, mm-hmm. you know, they got the music out. And then, you know, they asking around because that's what it was, you know, because it wasn't like, it wasn't like who's hot on social media and all that shit. It's like yeah. who's buzzing in this area, who, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, you know, they'd be like, yeah. You know, jazz is over here, or even back further back, Johnny B. They was Johnny like, Yo, B. Johnny B is up here, and you know, when he come downstairs and to the music, you know, it's over with. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm not, I'm not bragging. I'm just saying that's what they used to say. So, you know, you got a couple of cats come around, I'm like, oh fuck this nigga, this nigga ain't all that. With you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. And you know, I just be cool. They be like. Cause they expect me to emotionally, you know, respond on some, oh, woo, 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 you know, so I pit bulling out. But, you know, I just stand in. I'm like, all right, word, you know, word. And in my mind, I'm like, I'm gonna beat this nigga yeah. under a fucking bus with these <laughs> rhymes right now, <laughs> you know. So, you know, niggas used to come, start their shit, you know, beat playing, and then I just hit him. Wow. I just hit him, and um, you know. At the end, and, and the beautiful part about it is that it didn't end in, like, violence, like, fuck, nigga, yeah. don't disrespect me, I'm going to be back. You know, it was like handshake. Mm-hmm. It was like, yo, man, you nice. You nice. You nice. Okay. And, um, and I, I appreciated that. And um, even, like, we started, get, we started going around. When you say we, who's your we? Well, after a while, like, you know, there was, in 1985, um, uh, I did a song called HP Gets Busy because mm-hmm. we had a, a little group called High Potent MCs and that was myself, Jay-Z, 
this cat Almond Joy and his brother EZLD. Mm-hmm. Um, so we did a song called HP. Oh, shit. Come on, baby. Fucking my head up. Come right on. Now. You know we got it, baby. Come right, right, Let's right. right Segway the shit out of that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I like that, man. Okay, keep going, keep going. So y'all had this song. Yeah. <laughs> right? Wow. But I got I got to come down from the ceiling right now. Real quick. <laughs> yeah, that ain't never got radio play. Or, <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I know, right? So that was an 85? I need to BDS that shit real quick. <laughs> Yo, Jack, stupid. Get your money, baby. Come on. You know what I'm that saying? was in 85? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 1985. And, um... So, so we did that song, and um, what happened was, uh, you know, we started making our way uptown, and mm-hmm. so I started doing like rap battles at Broadway International, mm-hmm. the rooftop. But we had a particular one, and um, I was battling against um, Just Ice. Uh, he had some some guy with him. I think his name was Triple T or something like that. And he nudged him out the way. I think he ran out of rhymes or some shit. <laughs> And um, nah, it, it'll live. Um, so basically, uh, we had a couple of battles, and um, I had this this dude. I don't know if he he's listening or not. His name is Disco B. He used to be the mm-hmm. manager up mm-hmm. there, at Broadway International. It's crazy how we remember shit, right? In detail, because Just Ice told us this same story. Oh, really? Yeah, Just Ice came and talked about a battle that's, we had with you. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I, ain't, I ain't want him to come looking for me or nothing because, okay. you know, I'm going to tell it like it is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> nah, shout, shout out to my nigga Just nah, Ice. that's the real one, boy. Yeah, that's yeah. my dude. I yeah. love him. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. So, also, um, Dana Dane was in that Dana uh, Dane contest. was in that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So, who won that battle? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just, Kung Fu laugh. Oh just said Jay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Jay, was, Jay was the DJ that day. Were your DJ? At the nah, nah. No, it, wasn't it, it, okay. it was no DJ. Um, okay. Well, it was a DJ, but the DJ would just put on put on beats. So like random beats. They would ask us like what they want, what um we might want them to play, but yeah. they was just playing some other shit anyway. Uh huh. So you know you just had to get it get it how you live. And um, I ain't give a fuck because I, I rhyme over anything. And, you know, we was getting busy, but, you know. So I'm saying all that to say that my brother, Grandmaster Kaz, when, oh. I, when I finally met him. Mm-hmm. In, Cold uh, Crush Brothers. Definitely. Shout to the Cold Crush. Um, And I think this was 1980. No, 1990. Uh-huh. When I actually finally met him. I had to tell him, like, yo, you are my indirect tutor. Because he is. Yeah. Because I went to a high school my first year and a half in the high school. I went to a high school called Fiorella H. LaGuardia, High School of Music and the Arts. Uh-huh. You know, the... Um, fame school. Like. Yeah. That's the fame school? Yeah, the, fam- yeah. the school yeah. that okay. they base yeah. fame on. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. all right. Yeah, and, and I went to the old one when it was on um, 135th and Convent. Uh-huh. And so, um, you know... Me and my man Stevie Steve may live forever. Um, that's when we got introduced to a different style of of hip hop, you know, or b boy, we should say. Okay, you know, let's okay. keep it one hundred. Keep it one hundred. So, um, basically, that's when we got exposed, and we brought it back to Brooklyn. Uh-huh. So we were like all, almost on some hybrid shit. It's like, yo, I don't know what they doing, but that shit is some old alien shit. What was the difference? <laughs> like, what was it? The job? difference was was that. You know, um, okay, so you go to Brooklyn and you go to a block party, you know, nigga gonna get on the mic talking about some Mikey and Ike was playing in the ditch, uh-huh. you know. But, you know, we came back with some, well, yes, yes, y'all, uh, to the beat, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh, uh-huh. So they was like, to the beat, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But we were mimicking what we heard uptown. Uh-huh. And... You know, I heard, I heard, I got exposed to the greats when they were still playing, like, in the Y mm-hmm. and all that other shit. And, you know, I heard, like, Melly Mel get it. And when I heard Grandmaster Kaz, I was like, yo, that's where I need to be. Uh-huh. Because this motherfucker was so locked in 
and it was so effortless. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I was like, damn, like he's killing it. Like, you know, when somebody rhyming and then you're not just listening to what he's saying, but it's like he he was he was like and that and that's what I try to be like a um almost like an instrument. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You become percussive in your lyrics. And that's where he was, and he used to ride that beat. I was like, yo, that's where I'm going to be at. So when I finally met him in 90 out in L.A., he was like, yeah, we heard about you. He And he <laughs> told me, you know, and, you know, self, um, shameless plug, he was like, yo, man, we already knew about you. Um, we used to talk about you uptown. We was like, yeah, that little kid from Brooklyn is better than everybody. Mm. And I said, God damn, nigga, checks in the mail. There it is. Wow, that's the biggest. That's like a grand. That's your Grammy, your Oscar. They get <laughs> yeah, cast yeah. to say that's beyond that. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's um, what I'm saying. Just I said you cheated and was singing in that battle. Hey, I did what I had to do, man. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't my fault you can't sing, man. <laughs> Fuck that. I got to pull out the big gun. <laughs> do everything in the kitchen sink. You know what I'm saying? And throw some triplets in your face. Um, when you got the deal with EMI. First of all, this triplet style, did you did it just come to you or you sat in a room one day and figured it out and and then did you share it with Jay or did he already was he already up on it or cuz y'all styles were so similar. Right. You know what I mean? That yeah. but we heard you first so we thought oh this must be one of his crew guys and they kind of got a similar style. Kind of like when we heard uh Slick Rick and Dana Dane. You right. know what I mean? They kind of... And Rick was there, too. Yeah, Rick was there? Yeah, he's always cutting his eye at me like... I was like, damn, I ain't do nothing to you, dog. Yeah. But shout out to Slick Rick. Slick Rick. Yeah, so they, they were competing. They were like, yeah, we're going to beat this Brooklyn nigga into the ground and shit. But, you know, <laughs> wasn't going to happen. <laughs> it wasn't going <laughs> to... He's got that MC heart. How did y'all... How did you develop... The, did it start in the bedroom? Did it start in the studio? When did you... Well, it started when... Um, this... These are the real mixtapes. The mixtape, like you throw, um, you throw the cassette in, you know, a component of your component set or in the boom box and hook up, you know, everything. And then you press play and record, and your DJ starts, you know, he throws on something, mm-hmm. and you just rhyme for like a half hour and <laughs> yeah. shit. You know what I'm saying? Yes. That was a that's what that's a mixtape mix was exactly. Mm-hmm. So, um. So we were doing the mixtape, and I had written some stuff, and I came to a point where it was something that I, I don't don't ask me the the exact line, but I came to a point where everything under normal cadence, like under sixteenths, uh-huh. it wouldn't fit. But I wanted to say it, and I wanted to say it, and get the whole shit in that one line. So instead of jumbling. I just changed the the cadence and changed the time signature just for that one line. And then um, my DJ at the time, um, we called him Cool KG, uh-huh. my man Dave, uh, Dave Gregory, um, he was like, yo, what the fuck was that that you did, man? He was like, I was like, yo, I just, you know, I wanted to fit all that shit in one line. He was like, that shit was crazy. Um, you should do that a little more. And I was like, all right, that's cool, it's cool. I ain't really paying much attention to it. Yeah. But then I just found myself doing it more subconsciously and then consciously just doing it more. And I became known for it. So by the time um, we did HP Gets Busy, Uh you know, um, Jay-Z and myself was doing it. Uh You know, and um, by the time I got the deal... When we did the original um, Originators, uh-huh. the idea came from. <laughs> Yo, what's up, Jay-Z? Yo, what's up, Segway yes. killing me. The idea came from what? Beautiful. Yeah. So the idea, Jay Z said, like, Yo, you know what? We should do a whole song where we doing this style. And I was like, Word. You know what? It's about time. We should. Yeah. So kick, kick, kick it. My rhyming and singing techniques are play. Originators. Come on, man. All right, all right. Come on, man. Shit. Man, you answering shit I've always wanted to ask before then. Boy, from way back then. How did y'all, when you listen to Jay-Z's story, like I, when, 
I, I, me and my partner Tech had a crew um, in Cali, and a lot of us did different things. Some of us couldn't get out the streets, right? Right. right. And so that that street life was calling that necessity, that survival game. You mm-hmm. know that environment is tackling. You know, it's just temptation. And Jay often talks about his beginnings. You know, being in that street life, what he's done with it. Um, and flipped it and turned it around to a fucking conglomerate uh, empire. Yes. To me, anybody who lived that life should now know that you could transform and take your shit to a whole higher level. Yes. But we had somebody who was in our crew that wanted to go that route. I didn't want to go that route, and we had to meet at a crossroads. So while this was all taking place for us, it was like, damn, man, he's still out there. While this was taking place, was Jay still out there, though? (sighs) Yeah. yeah. Uh no, you know, not, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so so um yeah, I I'm sort of to blame because okay. I was um yeah, I was doing, you know, I was doing my thing and you know, uh I guess I sort of uh indirectly introduced them to a lot of that. Mm-hmm. And um you know, later on, you know, it became the sort of the other way around. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, truth be told, like we we both had dabbled in and out, you know. So when um, when bro talk about you know spending money from eighty eight, you know <laughs> eighty eight was was the year eighty eight, mm-hmm. you know was basically the deal. Mm-hmm. Um, me, uh, Jay, and Irv flying out to uh, London to record my first album, Irv Gotti. Irv Gotti. Mm-hmm. Yep. That was my DJ. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, right? Yeah. Yep. Like, pieces, puzzle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, for the record, you know, 2020, y'all still seeing what Jigsaw, if y'all get it. Yeah. Um, There's no puzzle. There's no puzzle. No mm-hmm. puzzle. Okay. Um, So, um, yeah, he, he basically was, was in it. And he didn't want to... He used to he used to say that he he didn't want to be in the music business, but I knew that he did. Mm-hmm. But I also knew that he was doing what you know he felt he had to do to accumulate whatever it is that you know was in his heart mm-hmm. to to um, gain you know equity to you know to rock yeah. to, for whatever he wanted to do. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, did y'all have discussions as a crew? Cause it's the HP crew, right? Did y'all, did, well, this was way after. Right, this that. was way after. But did mm-hmm. y'all discuss the big dream, like the ten year plan, or you know, like what y'all y'all visions were for yourself mm-hmm. at that? Cause we used to do that. We used to have make five and ten year plans when we were seventeen, eighteen, nineteen years of age. Wow. We yeah. we just we did, but it was so it was not like as a crew, like. uh it was more likely with between Jay and myself, like, all right, you know, so I'm on this end, you on that end, and then I might be on the same shit that you on for a few years, and you might be on the the same shit I'm on uh-huh. for a few years, but whoever pops first, we just bringing everybody along. That's the that's the yeah that squad yeah. talk right there. Whoever pop yeah. first, we bring everybody along. Mm-hmm. So I I don't want to har- harbor on the back and forth that y'all went through over the years. I, that's, I think it's well documented. People want to read up on it. Yeah. Um, but I do want to know um, because now y'all in business, right? Yeah. Okay. So now you're doing a distribution and equity deal with Rock Nation, correct? Right. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Which is an amazing thing. Round of applause for that, man. Come on, because. And that's 20 damn near 30 years later that you guys are able to come to resolution mm-hmm. and find a way to continue the dream that started as youth. Right. At the time when you had an opportunity to sign with Rock Nation, you were apprehensive about it, so you didn't do it, right? Yeah, well, early I was, on. That, yeah, that early was on. technically Rockefeller. Rockefeller, Rockefeller, my bad. Rockefeller mm-hmm. Records, so you didn't do it. No, nah, didn't. After all the little back and forth, like you got two juggernauts throwing little, you know, fucking, you know, jabs at each other, but y'all still loved each other. You could hear it in the jabs. It was all hurt and pain. Yeah. What changed this time around? What was said to you? What did What did Jay say to you to make you comfortable doing the deal in 2019? Um. Or 20, when did it happen? When did it uh, happen? 20. God. Yeah. 2018. 2018. Yeah. Yeah. So, 
it I think it was more of what we didn't say. And um, you know, I didn't have like people, you know, people who were around me who would happen to frequent around some of his circle, you know, they realized like, um, it's like, but damn, you know, for all the things that the media was saying, you know, about how I felt, you know, it's like, damn, you know, when I talk to jazz, I don't get any of that. Uh So those, you know, so those sentiments transfer over and then, you know, the same sentiments, you know, in kind transfer back to me. Uh So, um, I did a couple of interviews where of course they were asking me, well, how do you feel? You know, it's like, you know, why the hell should I tell you my feelings anyway? But, yeah. you know, I'm going to give I'm going to give you this much It's like that's my bro. And regardless of all of whatever y'all talking about is supposed to be a beef because I used to tell people oftentimes like, yo, beef is me standing behind a thin tree. Niggas busting slugs at me and I got three left in the clip. That's beef. Yeah. This other shit this shit is child's play. This shit is, you know, well, I said this and you said that. You know, that shit ain't nothing. And. Most of that was it was really initiated by, you know, like Shaq say, the others. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know the saying? others, yeah. Yeah, so the <laughs> others was really like, you know, like oh, jazz and this, this, that, and the other. And I, I personally think that, you know, just certain people in the circle around that time, they, they understood the camaraderie between Jay and myself. And, you know, as sad and unfortunate as it is, um, they don't like that. You know, uh-huh. they want to be the man sitting next to the man. Uh-huh. And and I wasn't on that. I've never been on that. Like, if you my friend, you my friend, you my bro, you my bro. Simple as that. I don't care who else is around you unless I see them doing potential harm. You know, besides that, I don't give a fuck. Like, uh-huh. I don't date guys. <laughs> fuck, I'm about you know what I'm saying? <laughs> You know, so if you, oh, shit. you know what I'm saying? If I got, if I got a special lady, you know what I'm saying? And, and some nigga, you know, some nigga playing a, playing a close and shit like that. You know, I might get in my feelings a little bit. You know, I'd be like, yo, you playing, you playing my bull a little too close. You know, I have to step back, you know, dog, you know, but you know, if you doing your thing proper, you know, you ain't got to worry about that shit anyway. But you know, that's another story, uh-huh. you know? Um, are you are you proud to see how well this man has done in business? Yeah, and and yeah, and a lot. I think people are just now understanding that that's how I really feel, and that's how I've always felt. I'm like, yo, I mean, on so many levels, on even even on the level of myself, it's like in quantum, when when you get to a certain height, I'm still gonna be as you go up, I go up. Yeah, and in all actuality, he has been just as instrumental in keeping my name, you know, mm-hmm. relevant for the past 20 years. Yeah. You know, so I, I love that. And not just because of that, because even if it didn't, it's because he's doing it. And that's my bro. And I I did a lot of things and sacrificed a lot of things so that he wouldn't have to go through a lot of the shit that I went through to get to a certain point. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing people don't understand. They don't understand it because it doesn't translate in their minds because that's not their, they they not built like that. That's not their type. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They out there for self, you know, and they like, well, why would anybody do that? You know what I'm saying? And that's the whole reason. That's why, because I'm me, you're you, you don't get it. There are other people out there who do, but you don't. You don't get it because that's not how you are. Yeah. And that's fine. That's that's what helps me recognize who the fuck I am. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. By you being a shithead, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, well, I don't want to be like that. That Something motherfucker's else. a shithead. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Fucking okay, shithead. You know what uh, saying? The warm-up is being released uh, tomorrow. Jazz O is here. We just talking with him, but I want to remind you that his new music is coming out tomorrow. He got a new track called Marcy, too, the latest track. Yes. Um, um, uh, from this project, Tracy, you you want to ask this, you know, this Absolutely. iconic figure a question? Absolutely, I'm loving everything that you're sharing. You're sharing your disposition you. is just so gangster and beautiful at the same time. Thank you. Thank you. Checks in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> um, going back to '85, as you were climbing up in your career, I couldn't help but think about 
what your mother and sister and brother were thinking about what you were doing with this vocabulary. Right. Were they in support? Was there any type of divide? What was the household like when you took up rapping? Well, it was, um, my mother liked it because it was something that kept me more on the end of entertainment as opposed to the, the street thuggery, violence, carrying guns and all that shit. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, they always, you know, as parents, they always, you know, get it, get your education and yeah. all this other stuff. So, um, but she was proud and she, she knew that it was better and she knew me. She knew that I'm going to do what I choose regardless. You know, let's just hope that um, he makes it out in one piece. Right. So that's, that's where she was. But she doesn't listen to any of the music hmm. because, you know, she hears, you know, kind of the stuff that, you know, I talk about. And, you know, I mean, it's hip hop. You right. know what I'm saying? Yeah. But she's just not really involved with that. But she, you know, she understands and she's she's very proud. And, you know, shout to my mom. Yes, you know, indeed. Phileas Burks. Yo, Heather, what did you think as an MC? Um, uh, I don't know if y'all knew each other because uh, Heather was just a baby. Um, mm-hmm. Some of these years we're talking about Heather was just still being burped. Um, but what did you think of... <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. What did, what did you think of Jazz O? And did, did y'all ever... We tour always, together. J- Jazz and I have always had mutual respect for each other, and it's yeah. just so odd. Like the, I remember we first met probably in D and D studio. Yeah, and we just saw each other, just started hugging. Like it, it was just, I remember that hug, that mm-hmm. first day. And Jazz, what I always appreciated about Jazz was that it was never about Jazz. He would be in other people's sessions, just hanging out. Primo, obviously, shout out to DJ Premier, had a shout certain out. room at D&D on lock. Studio S- B. Studio B. So everybody knew, like, when you heard beats or certain things coming out, you Prem was there. So everybody would just go in and hang out. But obviously, everybody wanted to be in a room with Primo. Um, but Jazz didn't let it stop there. If me and MOP was in a session, Jazz would come through. If this person was that Jazz just stopped in in people's studios just to say what's up and always spread that love. And I, and I remember thinking, like, wow, like he has a relationship with, with all of these different artists enough to be able to go into somebody's room because the studio is private. Yeah, You know, yeah. you can't just walk in people's sessions. Because people yeah. think you're going to bite right. the beat. Especially in D&D. Yeah, because they mm-hmm. might, you might take that sample and try to do something on your own. Come on now. Get a lyric and bite a flow. It was yep. different in and there. And the that rats was, might get you. And the rats yeah. might <laughs> get you. It was a different energy in there. The bathroom was di- nasty. Mm. It yeah. was a different energy in there. But I always remember Jazz never being off limits to anybody. It was always he just had this thing about him and this was always cool so yeah we ended up in the same shows sometimes in different places Mm -hmm. it was just i don't know what it was we just always had a mutual respect and love for each other for sure kendra spirits no doubt Mm -hmm. jazz always here um how did you feel because your style started becoming emulated in many ways you had dos effect um Twister, Mr. Twi- at that time he was Mr. Twister, had a similar style out of right. Chicago. Right. He was ill too. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, bone Fushnikins. Th- Fushnikins. <laughs> Crucial bone, Conflict. Crucial Conflict. conflict. Bone Thugs and Harmony. Mm-hmm. All of these, to me, in my opinion, were derivative of who you guys were. I felt like I heard that first from y'all. That, but and back then, biting, like now you can make a song, I can make a song identical to yours, and if it hit, it hit. It ain't no violation in people's minds right. and you didn't even have to write it and i didn't yeah exactly i didn't <laughs> even have to write it back then if you bit somebody's style that was like a cardinal sin mm-hmm. how did y'all feel about did you find it in flattering or did you did it was it concerning um i found it flattering and also because um you know i i felt that um i had started something that that caught on uh-huh. um and then you know, like Heather was was elaborating on, like that's that's what I like. I like the camaraderie. I like everybody doing it and succeeding and prospering together. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, even though even though like MCing and all that is based on competition and you know stuff like that. Number one, it wasn't really always like that, but you know, it is what it is now. And, you know, there's a lot of, you know, competition and stuff like that. That's cool. But at the end of the day, you know, that's performance. That's showtime. That's in front of the cameras. Like, away from the cameras, like, 
leave that shit alone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let everybody let everybody get bread. And and to circle back around to what you were saying about the so called quote beef unquote between Jay and myself, I think that people are happy just in the fact that it didn't end up a different way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that was, you know, that that was my plan. I was like, nah, it's it's not gonna end up like that. And because the sentiment wasn't there mm-hmm. on either side. But um Yeah. But yeah, it, it it's um yeah, oh oh I gotta tell you uh, a quick story about D and D. Like so <laughs> okay. and, and another 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 shameless plug. You know, I'm on the radio. Okay, right. man, this is time this is time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're wasting no time here, brother. Hey, hey, you know. <laughs> and by the way, you know <laughs> But uh yeah, so um when I got my deal, uh, they wanted me to go in the studio and you know, like, well, you got tracks you got songs i was like i got the songs i got songs written Uh uh-huh you know but i don't have any beats so they were like um so where you gonna get the beats from i was like um put me in the studio i make beats right so they call this uh this new studio right it's been around for a few years and um they're like yeah we got this guy you want to bring him in uh you know he's like and they asked me, how long you want to be in there? It's like, book the whole day. But they didn't know that I meant like 12 hours. Yeah. They booked me 24 hours. <laughs> so I was in the studio <laughs> for 24 hours. And the funny part about it was that they said, um, why is he requesting a keyboard, a drum machine, and a turntable? Like, what's the purpose of that? And they were like, we don't know. This is my management saying it. Uh-huh. We don't know, but get it for them. And that was D&D Studios. I was the first person to ever do hip-hop out of D&D Studios. Wow. Wow. Because they, wow. they yeah. used to do, yeah, shameless plug. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Nah, nah. Fuck it. Because you know what? If you don't say it, it won't be documented. Facts. And, and it's a lot of false documentations going and on out here. we have to protect oh. our, our legacies. Legacy. That's right. Absolutely. That's right. Um, I, I hear it all the time. Like, yeah. people be telling me stories. Like, one cat that I'm, I've known for, like, 30 years, he was telling me. I don't want to tell a specific story because yeah. then he called me and then I had to curse him out. But... <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm just saying, shit. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but he was telling me like, yeah, I remember when such and such happened. And, you know, I was standing right there, and I was like, the whole time I was like, I was, I really was standing right there. Yeah, and you weren't. Yeah, but I didn't want to break his heart. You know, I was like, let's, let's go on with the story, finish it you up. Know what? Let's talk about <laughs> some other shit. <laughs> so funny because too. you, you know, like what was that the that old Walter Cronkite shit? Uh huh. You were not there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you were not fucking there, man. Um, Ain't no they need a like whole one movie. No one can fuck you better. Uh, all right, all right. No one can fuck you better. Sleeps around, but he gives me a lot. Keeps you in diamonds and leather. Friends are telling me I should leave you alone. Tell the freaks to find a man that ain't Y'all know that's Jazz O singing on that hook? Ain't that you? What? Yeah? Yeah, it is. Come on. Jazz O said it ain't his fault. common knowledge, but I just want to... A lot of people... It's not really. It ain't? It's not really because somebody told me, I think last week, they was like, yo, I didn't even know that. And and, uh, I don't... Yeah, I don't want to talk about other... Other media. You don't? I don't give a... I don't... Yeah. Who who, who is it? Uh, Yeah, um... Uh, Clark Kent was telling Nori on Drink uh, Champs. Drink Champs? Yeah. 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 And he was like, yeah, you know, that's Jazz on the hook. And he was like, is Jazz on the hook? He was like, so you saying I can call Jazz, get a hook right now? And he was like, yeah. He was like, yeah, I'm call Jazz up. And was, but, yeah. Clark, but, yeah. Clark Kent just hit me with a question. Clark. Clark. Man, man, matter of fact, let me just call Clark Kent. See if he picks up. Uh, let me see if he pick up. Yo, Clark has the same, like, he he got me beat as far as having the same number for like a zillion years. <laughs> Clark has the same number. Hold on, let me see. That's commendable. <laughs> let me see if he'll pick up. He might not pick up. Uh, let me see if he'll pick up. It's a good question too. 
Be- before you ask that question, I remember reading an article where you said that you were going to put out a mixtape of about 12 or 13 songs with you and Jay-Z, songs that weren't released or something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did that ever happen? No, nah, it never happened. You still got those songs? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got them in your phone? No, nah, I don't have them in my phone. It's <laughs> Scott right here. <laughs> Well, uh, I'm gonna get a lot of. I'm gonna get more phone calls than I've probably ever gotten. <laughs> that's, that's Thanks, Sway. You know, hey, no, listen. Nah, it's, it's all it's, great. It's all and I'm not vibration. being sarcastic. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. No, it's all love, and you and we keeping it on a. I'm focused on keeping all this on a high vibration. There it you is. know what I mean? Like, no doubt. It's time for us to stay elevated. We live in an elevated ways. How you doing, sir? We got the iconic Clark Kent on the phone right now. What Clark, up, Clark, what up with you, baby? Uh, peace to the room. I didn't know you was going to do this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I ain't got to do it, man, if you don't want to do it. Nah, it's all good. You know you my brother. Okay, I love you, man. Thank you. Because I hit Clark is told him I had you coming up here. And just on some historic, you know, uh, documentation, I know Clark has been in the DNA of all Brooklyn success and hip-hop success mm-hmm. um, from, the, from when we first came into the game to now. So... He's one of those people I call on when I need truth. Um, um, and I asked him, you know, would it be something interesting? And he, and he said, you mind asking him that question, Clark? Um, which one? There's, I think we talked about two. Okay. Uh-oh. The the uh, okay, hold on. Top three rhyme writers. Sway ever. in the morning, Shay. Yeah, 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 go ahead. Eight 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 seven four two three three four five. If you have any <laughs> questions, you know we're live. Oh, boy. So okay. this is how to the, the last everybody. question. The the last question. Okay. Thanks. All right. Um, that last question. I mean, I think it's a very selfish question because I know it. I know it started from a place of pure love. And um, the question is, will jazz ever make the album with Jay and Sauce man this this worse than like Jeopardy <laughs> that's except, Sauce except, money by the way money, except yeah. I didn't get the answer <laughs> I gotta get the yeah, yeah. um hmm it, I mean I would I would say based on present day scenario I would say no but I would never say that something can't happen because anything can happen. Uh, you never know. Um, and I wouldn't be 100% adverse to it. You know, I can't. It's too, it's too much. You know what I'm saying? First of all, let me say what's up, Clark. Good, good morning. How you doing, brother? Yeah, yeah, let's do that. I, 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 would, I would like to add that in a in Sway and I's conversation, I did say you are easily top three, and I can't put one or two in place, but I would have to say top three best pens ever in rap. Oh man, that's Clark Kent who said that. I'm going, yo, so many checks in the mail. I'm going broke, man. Easily your top nah, thank three you. best writers ever. Serious business. Yeah, like, like, Thank you, bro. Bar for bar, I I find it hard pressed to say someone writes better rhymes than Jazz O. Like, I mean, I'm talking about from like the beginning of Jazz O. Like when I met Jazz, we were all young, like super young. And when people were talking about other rappers, I'd be like, you must have never heard Jazz O. Because he was crazy mm. with the pen. Mm. Thank like, you, his bro. His pen was ignorant. Like, like he said some things in front of me that I'm still reciting back to people. Like this is what Jazzo said, and they look at me like he said that. Wow, yo, that's crazy. Well, because what Clark is basically saying is something that this conversation comes up now, even in 2020. And you look at the the DNA. You look at the Jay Zs. You look at the Jazzos. Source Money. They have that writing gift in common. Yeah. You know, you're talking about people and MCs and artists who have written for other people as well. Do your history on Source Money. Yeah. He he has right. he has written a lot of hits that he may not have said them, but he he wrote them out. So mm-hmm. that's crazy that Clark is pointing but, that out. But the thing is, the reason why I ask about that album is because you would be hard pressed to find 
five MCs that write better rhymes than Sauce. Mm, You'd be hard-pressed to find Mm. three that write better rhymes than Jazz. You'd be hard-pressed to find three that write rhymes better than Jay. And imagine, they all come from the same Same place. place. They're they're, they're, they're iron sharpened each other's iron. You know, you add Kane into the mix, but I removed Kane out of the mix because when Kane met them, they were like that. Facts. Okay. Yeah. They you know were they were already like, like that when like, Kane met him. Yeah, they were always like that. And then I say, you know, like they they might have shopping Kane because maybe he didn't see that around those corners. And then when he got around them, it was like, wait a minute. That's this Clark Kent them. saying that. Yeah, I mean, I mean and, and don't don't get it confused. I'm not taking anything away from Kane. Literally right, he right. is dynamite. Yes. You know what I'm saying? But these three dudes was in Monty Projects being that crazy all the time. Mm. Yeah. And 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 you produced some some crazy uh tracks for us that uh Sway was trying to get out of me, but I don't have <laughs> <laughs> now I could okay. put you okay. on blast that's and say that you why, probably that's do. The why I asked the question. Okay. That's the reason why I asked the question. That's one. But the other reason is this. We are all men that grew up as friends and I think it can go down if men who grew up as friends have a conversation and that would put a lot of MCs on notice. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, come on, Jazz. Hey, Woo. If, it, if it was up to me, you know. But well, 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 I look at it like this. You the, out of, you the oldest out of all of us. Yeah, thanks for that. <laughs> I can't. I'm just fucking around. <laughs> Jazz just took the check back out of the mail. Like, you are the oldest out of all of us, and, and you know, you could be the, the biggest out of all of us. Yeah, yeah. Nah, I, get it. I know we still doing that, right? We still doing pause. Hey, uh, I, yeah, I did that shit yesterday. Some shit that gets said, you just gotta say pause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that was <laughs> facts, facts. There we okay. go. Yeah. Facts. Hey, Clark. Clark hey, stupid. Clark. <laughs> Clark. I love you, family. Thank you for um, chiming in, bro. I mean so much. I appreciate you. Yo, thanks for taking up time during my interview. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Not, nah, not nah, thanks, Clark. I love you, bro. Well, you know it's the same, bro. Always. Oh. And mm-hmm. all right, Clark, I'll holler at you tomorrow. You know what's going down tomorrow. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, family. Thank you. Peace. Shit, man. So let me ask you this, because um, we're going to have to do a Yo, part. Heather, I'm big time. You, 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 shit, shit, shit. I, I you know, I'm here. I'm, 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 I'm cheering for you. Come hey, on now. You know. Oh, yeah. You know, so I got you. I'm getting anxiety and nothing. Right, right, okay. Too much happening real quick. <laughs> so, <laughs> so now we're in 2020. Kings mm-hmm. County Media. Yes. The warm up. It's yep. out tomorrow. Yep. Marcy is out right now. Yep. And um, yeah, I I, I got to tell everybody the the um actual name of the single is M A R C Y. Talk about it. And, and you spell it out, right? Right. Because you spell it out, and also the C Y is S E E and W H Y. So um, yeah, it's a it's a song. It's a um, it's a love story, whereas um. If you didn't know about Marcy, you didn't know I was from it, then you would think that I'm talking about, you know, uh, a nurturing spirit or a nurturing person. I I personify Marcy because to me and others who grew up there and others who grew up in certain places where you just get that feeling when you go back, you know, um, I was just expressing how, how I felt. And all of his reality, you know, I personify that place because there's a spirit. There's a spirit with me growing up in Marcy and living the same place the whole time that I was in Marcy. All my experiences, you know, the quote unquote good, the quote unquote bad. I'm going to talk about the quote unquote, right? Because I keep doing it and I say I'm going to change it. Like people do... They say, quote, unquote. But if you say, quote, unquote, technically, you're not quoting anything because you're closing the quote. Yeah, yeah, your mom told you that. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) So, yeah, but I say it because that's what's popular and people Mm -hmm. understand it better. So if you say, quote, Quote, unquote, unquote, good. But technically, it's, quote, good, unquote. Yeah, but um, 
Yeah, but um, that's a place like I I love Marcy and um, I put the C Y. Of course, it's a double entendre, and um, it's 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 a love story. It's a love story. What what do you see for the future with Rock Nation now that y'all partnered up and, and Kings County Media? What what do you hope? What what do you see for the future of your company? Um, well, um. I have a distribution situation with um, Equity Distro, uh-huh. which technically is a Carter Enterprise uh-huh. entity. Um, I see, I see um, this EP being very successful, and um, them coming back giving me some more money. Jazz, oh, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> what's your original name? Jazz, jazz, ma- jazz master, master B. B, and then before that was Johnny B. I'm being transparent, y'all. Okay, so you were Johnny B. Yeah, I was Johnny B. Yeah, you hear that? I love that, man. You, 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 we, we're from the era where we ain't gonna give it all to you. You got to figure some of that shit out. Bong. Let, 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 be invested, yo, man. This was a um, really, really uh, amazing um, conversation for me. Yes. Personally. Me as well. Yeah. Me as well. For me personally, my partner King Tech was like, ask him this, ask him that. I said, nah, I'm just going to flow and see where it takes us. Mm-hmm. And uh, you've always been stand up with me. I've seen you in mm-hmm. Chicago last. And every mm-hmm. time we've seen each other, I try not to fan out. <laughs> uh, and I feel we friends now. You know, we brothers now. But I still, man, I like to fan out to my brothers, you know, mm-hmm. to tell no you doubt. I appreciate you because. Vice versa, man. Y- yeah, man. Y'all, 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 uh, what y'all were doing back then when Word to the Jazz came elevated the fucking rap game to a whole nother level. It, it challenged us to go, oh, man. Ah. Come on, man. <laughs> what the hell are we doing? Why am I even rapping? Oh, you know what great. I mean? And so thank you. Uh, support Jazz. Absolutely. If they want to reach you on social, I need every citizen to follow him on his social. What's your social? Uh, uh, reach me on IG at uh, Jazz OKKMG. That's J A Z O K K M G. Facebook, Jazz O, J A Z O. Twitter, the real Jazz O, T H E R E A L J A Z O. And also visit the website. It's uh, kingscountymediagroup.com. That's K-I-N-G-Z-K-O-U-N-T-Y-M-E-D-I-A-G-R-O-U-P.com. There it is. Jazz, man. We'll do it again, man. I can't wait to see you on tour. Um, Thank you. Absolutely. Give it up for Jazz, though.